Hey, good morning. So I finished the setup of this thing yesterday in the assembly and I wanted to give it a shot. So I wanted to do the first power on on camera so we could experience what to expect. I got a power cord that says it's 12 volts, 5 amps. I'm going to test it to see if that's true or not. So 12.24. That's about as close as I'm going to get. So 12.24 is what I'm using. You always want to check these because a lot of them will say 12 volt on the pack itself. You'll test them, they'll be 16 volt. They're relying on an internal rectifier. But I want 12. Okay, so make sure it's turned off. Here's the power jack, power cable. Plug it in. Just in case it would go in a transmit, I have a dummy load. Let's turn it on. And it's working. So let's see what we've got. Uh, I want to do lower sideband, but let's try CWS. Oh, you have to turn off and on each option. Oh, I have to have USB and LSB, one of those two selected. I can do RIT or not. So here's the two VFOs at the top. It's automatically changing the frequency here. If I go to 40, it goes to 7499. That's the very top end of 40. 30, 14. I'm hoping we can program these. Okay, words per minute. So that's pretty neat. This is the selector knob, obviously. So. Oh, this has a click in. There, that's how you acknowledge it. So I do words per minute, set it, and then push in the rotary encoder. So CW, 12 words per minute, 800 hertz filter. Frequency, so I can type it in. I can do 7025. That works good. If I hit split, I can receive on one frequency, transmit on another. Basically sets A and B and swaps back and forth. Most radios do it that way. So I can use this or I can use the stylus. So I want to do CW. kind of got myself in a bind here. I don't have any options. Well, I don't know what I've done. Let's turn it off, turn it back on. So I'm at frequency adjust. I hit the button to go to menu. I can select split. Or I can turn split off. Obviously, I'm missing something here. Well, my conclusion is for right now that I'm not going to use that for the menu right now. Because if I use this, I can go back and forth. And it is touch screen. I don't know that I want to use the touch screen. I wonder how resilient it is. So I've caught myself in purgatory here. I've got a screen, but no way to control it. Well, at this rate, I need to put a reset button on it rather than turn it on and off all the time. So get out of that. Turn RIT on and off. Fast tune came up. Turn it off to get my menu back. And I can fix that blacked out space by selecting these, I think. There's fast tune. You see, it doesn't rewrite these, but if I select them, it goes back. Well, it's not perfect, and for what I paid for it, I don't necessarily expect it to be perfect. I can probably go in and fix it. Okay, so this is version 6.1. Source code's available. You can make changes. I caution you to be careful making the changes. 
Uh, I will probably replace the Nano that's in here with another one programmed and keep that one virgin so I can always go back to it. This is the first power on. I'll, I'm going to do another video of it actually on the air, which would be a lot more realistic of what you should expect. Okay, first impressions. Very well made kit. Nice case. Very, very minimal assembly. Nice touch screen. VFO seems to be handling pretty well. I think they give quality parts in this. Kind of a cheapy microphone, but you can always make your own. You can always adapt another microphone to this. Okay, so first impressions. If you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.